Good day friends, uh, this is me again coming to you from here. I received some thoughts and uh, I am very elated and uh, I feel like sharing it. Very short because I don't want to take your time. <laughs> and the topic is uh, thoughts and money. Uh, your thoughts, the way I received it and understand it now, your thoughts are your capital of money you invest in your future. Uh, they are like your ticket to heaven. And of course, heaven is in your mind. Your mind actually is heaven because this is where you have communion, you know, with the creative force that sustains us and everything in creation. Therefore, I can say logically that your mind is the garden of nature. Therefore, your mind is the voice of God with which you create your world. You can, you can imagine that whatever you see in your life today, your feelings, your moods, and state of standard of living or state of being at that moment, you know, physically, is an offshoot of your internality. Therefore, you have to use your mind, we have to use our minds to project thoughts of positivity. For example, you can say to your world through your thoughts, let there be this or that, believing that you have received it, assume that state, feeling that it's done. That assumption brings in the law of assumption. Because when you, get to, when you make that decision, that desire, and you unleash it, you assume that state. Because that takes care of the law of as, uh, assumption. Feeling that it is done, thereby living from the end instead of from the beginning. I tell you, it will be done. And how that happens, of course, is not, it's not going to be your business. Because the universe herself... The creative force that created everything in existence shall unleash series of events that will bring them to pass. I am sure of this. Remember, let's take for example, before you built or bought your house, you thought about it, imagined it, believing that you would accomplish it. At last, that house you created in your mind, which is your heaven, as I said before, is externalized as your reality. Maybe that is where you live today. Also, even the exterior landscaping and interior decorations of such a home, wherever it is on this planet, we are created through your desires. And of course, finally, such a realized imagination becomes one of your creations. And that is what everybody that is connected to this greed of play that we call the third dimensional existence is keyed into. That is what everybody else is. This is your creation. And you say, this is my house. This is my apartment. This is that. And this is this. You know, many have tried positive moods and feelings. I've tried it because it says, test the Lord and see. I tried it too. And without doubt, I can tell you that it works. Nevertheless, the main point of this discussion is to suggest that we are responsible for our moods, our thoughts, our imagination, our feelings, and our awareness of ourselves, and of course the actions that follow these states of being. Because when you project it, it comes from the root, and then it comes out there as branches of reality, depending on your projection, your thoughts positive or negative. Nobody can escape this. So our present and future realities depend always on the kinds of feelings or moods we invest in our minds in the noun. And in the noun, I mean, as soon as you make it, you, 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 you think and project a thought, it is unleashed. It becomes alive, whether positive or negative. And having passed through this problem of dwelling on negatives myself over the years, 
making the necessary switch to attract this consciousness is not easy. Never, never easy. Most people in our beautiful world are suffering with self-limitations and doubts. And I can tell you categorically that I was there and know the fears that come whispering through our thoughts, whispering through our imagination, different kinds, I can assure you. And now this brings us to a question. And the question is, that comes a time in our lives when we take a pause and ask this question. How should we transcend negative thoughts? It's a question that every mind should ponder. How do we transcend negative thoughts? Because it is assumed that or estimated that the human mind receives between 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts a day. And this includes even when you are sleeping. Therefore, in my own answer to this question, I can say that the first step should be forgiveness. Undoubtedly, I believe that most negative states are linked to emotional attachments to perceived wrongs. Wrongs done to us in the past by people and circumstances that hurt our natural human ego, which is the will that we received naturally to receive, the will to receive, because we are vessels of reception. When these states are bottled up, with time they become dividends and future sources of fear and negative thoughts that derail and give us wrong perceptions of reality and then, therefore, a different understanding of the true meaning of life. And the second step is persistence in love of others above human reason. Love of others above human reasons. If we take into consideration the commandment that love thy neighbor as thyself is the only way you can create your own world because love attracts love and love is happiness and love is God. Therefore, everything is included in this package. Ego is the human reason and it is always whispering to us and it is basically predetermined. You cannot suppress it, you cannot destroy it. Besides, it is the essence of our being so that we will be able to retrace our steps and consciously rise through the degrees to the world from where we descended to this basement. Therefore, love above reason is the only thing capable of covering all crimes against human ego and bring us into equivalence of form with the Creator, the good that does good. Thoughts of love for others as spiritual investments, importantly for the good of all humanity, a time has to come, and that time is now when we say, let what is mine be yours, even when what is yours remains yours. I'll come back to you. Maybe we treat this topic later. Maybe through another subject. But for now, I leave you with a prayer, and I pray that the Lord, the Creator, the life force that sustains everything in creation and in existence be with you and sustain you all until I come back to you. From me, this is Mike Mbadiwe of the Life Goal Solutions coming to you from here. From me, from here, it's good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, depending on your tourism. I love you all, and it shall be well with us. Thank you, friends, until I come back to you. Bye. Bye, friends.